presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox We are San Diego. We welcome you to Chicago, where tonight, Jolie Chassin, he's been hot the last couple of games, 1-0, with a 3.48 earned run average in his last two starts. On the other side, we'll see Miguel Gonzalez. He's 2-0 in his last two starts with a nifty 1.29 earned run average. We welcome you inside Guaranteed Rate Field in Chicago as we get ready for game one of the series. Don Orsillo along with Mark Sweeney. Welcome to Padres Baseball. The Padres coming in here after heading to Texas for a couple of games and now take on the White Sox as interleague play continues. White Sox have lost five in a row. Padres trying to take advantage of a team that has not played well lately. Yeah, and you think about the White Sox. They are in a transition year, but offensively, they've struggled against right-handers. And you see it. It's not necessarily the breaking ball that gives them problems. It's exposure to the right-handed pitchers, and this is the adjustment they've had to try to make. That's the reason why Andy Green has inserted Jolice Chassin against them to try to neutralize that offense. Now, with Jolice Chassin, he knows that he has to set up that slider. Slider's been so good for him, and you have to know that you can expose these right-handed hitters of the White Sox to that slider. You have to set that up, but he has been very good with that slider. It has to be really good tonight. So tonight, the first of three between the Padres and the Chicago White Sox from the south side as the Padres come in with Jolie Chassin, the 29-year-old making his eighth start of the year, fifth on the road. It's next from Chicago on Fox Sports San Diego. Diego presents Padres Baseball, brought to you by Buick. By Petco, your complete pet store with all the services you need. And by Jack in the Box. Come try the new guacamole and bacon chicken sandwich only at Jack in the Box. 
We welcome you back to Chicago as we get ready for this three game series. Let's send it down to the field and Bob Scanlon. Well, thank you, Don. As we know, Andy Green flip flopped his starting rotation so that Clayton Richard would be the left hander against Texas. He definitely wanted Jolie's Chassin to face this right hand hitting White Sox club. They've struggled against righty so far this season. So we asked him, does that mean that Chassin might change his repertoire a little bit and use the slider a little bit more against this right handing ball club that struggled so much? Here's what he had to say. I think who he is matched up better against this team than it did Texas. That doesn't mean he's going to come out here and dominate this group by any stretch. It's a baseball game, but uh, I think the numbers bore that out. And uh, I think he's uh, well rested now. I think it's been a week since he pitched, so uh, he had a couple bullpens. I think he's uh, going to be fine, good to go. No major changes in what we're asking him to do from an Arsenal perspective. So expect nothing different out of Chassin tonight as far as how he uses his weapons against this White Sox ball club that's hitting 218. That's the lowest in all of Major League Baseball against right-hand batters. Now, the other issue that's been brought up with regard to Jolice is the home road splits. Obviously, his ERA much higher on the road. I've talked to several people in the organization. Is there any concern about that? They dismiss it outright. They say, you know what, it's such a small database. It's not been an issue throughout his history. He's had several good outings on the road, and they expect another one here tonight. Wipe out the White Sox. That's what the Padres will try to do. Jolis Chassin on the hill for the Padres. He'll try to get the Padres on a winning streak here on the road. Padres, White Sox, right here on Fox Sports San Diego. Strike out in a row for Chassin. Not able to do anything against Chassin all night. Waves at that pitch and Chassin strikes him out. Welcome back to Chicago as the fans settle in here for a Friday night game. And it's time now for our weather report brought to you by your always sunny San Diego Honda dealers. A little chillier here than it was in Texas. 57 degrees, northeast breeze at 8 miles per hour in the forecast clear for the remainder of the night. In fact, not a cloud in the sky as we get it started here tonight in game one. Don Orsillo, Mark Sweeney, and Bob Scanlon with you tonight from Guaranteed Rate Field in Chicago. As we take a look at the Saquon pick the stick. Fans, you can decide who you're with by tweeting out hashtag I'm with and the last name of the broadcaster you think has the best pick. If you're right, you could win a free foursome of golf at Saquon Golf Resorts. I am going with Matt Caesar, who is atop the order. And of course, he comes here from the Chicago Cubs on the other side of town, the north side. Yeah. But uh, I think he's very comfortable coming back here. He's leading off, and boy, he's hitting well so far with the Padres. He's looked very good, had some good at bats. And Mark Grant goes with Will Myers, who Tony Gwynn Jr. 
picks Myers for him. Mike Parmarez goes with Jan Herbis Salarte, who is DHing tonight. I went with Ryan Schimpf. I like the left-hander against Gonzalez. And Pop Scanlon goes with Corey Spangenberg. Well, check out the Padres lineup brought to you by Toyota. And as you mentioned, Matt Caesar at the top of that lineup, and he's ready to lead it off in center field. It's Corey Spangenberg at second base. Will Myers, the DH tonight. Padres still in the American League here, playing interleague play in a American League house. So, Jan Herbert Salarte will be at first base tonight. Ryan Schimpf at third. Austin Hedges does the catching with Eric Ibar at shortstop. Hunter Renfro is in right field, batting eighth. And Alan Cordova is in left field as he bats ninth. Well, Andy Green coming from a tough game last night in which Mike Napoli hit two home runs and of course the walk off against the Texas Rangers when it looked like Padres were to secure a win last night in the finale of the series against Texas. Well you think about it Don just getting yourself in position that's what the Padres have to do. Yes that was a devastating loss and going on a flight after it always doesn't help. But I liked the way they played the game. Clayton Richard looked very comfortable last night. Hopefully we get a, another outing like that from Jolie Chassin tonight. Well, the White Sox here getting ready to take the field any moment. They're a couple of minutes late here taking the field. And not sure what that is about here exactly as the White Sox starter Miguel Gonzalez made his way down to the dugout. And they have not yet taken the field. Padres kind of looking in, waiting for the White Sox to take the field. While we wait, we can tell you who the umpires are tonight. David Rackley has the plate, calling the balls and strikes. Larry Benover is the crew chief at first base, with Alfonso Marquez at second base, and Chad Fairchild is the umpire at third. Now coming in here to. Guaranteed rate field first year that it has been known as such. Of course, it was U.S. Cellular field for a number of years. And the Padres coming in here to take on this White Sox team. And here come the White Sox. Miguel Gonzalez makes his way to the hill as he gets the start tonight. For the White Sox as he gets start number seven of the year. Well, this fireworks night, and you can see and hear the fireworks going off as the White Sox take the field. Well, here's the scouting report for Miguel Gonzalez and command over velocity. Pitches to all quadrants, has struggled with his curveball and slider, and he's also struggled in his last two starts. After starting the year winning his first three decisions. The last two, he has not fared too well. Now the White Sox defensively left to right across the outfield. Melky Cabrera in left, Willie Garcia in center, Abasiel Garcia in right. Todd Frazier is at third base with Lurie Garcia at shortstop. Yomer Sanchez at second, Jose Abreu, the former rookie of the year at first base. Five errors, most by Major League first baseman. And it is Omar Marbez who does the catching. For Miguel Gonzalez. The White Sox have lost five straight games coming into this series. Padres trying to take advantage of a team that's kind of reeling right now. Although, even with that said, they get off to such a great start. Rick Renteria here, of course, at the helm of the White Sox, and they're only two and a half games out in the AL Central. And that's a good sign when you're not playing your best baseball and inconsistency creeps in to this young team. Rick Renteria understands you've got to play consistent baseball and how you do that is the first game of the series. Well Matt Caesar coming up here for the Padres to get it started in the first inning. And what a start Caesar has had so far with his new team getting a chance to play every day here. For the first time as he said about 40 years since he played every day. Been a utility guy with the Cubs the last couple of years 27 year old New Jersey native. In 15 games this year with the Cubs. He's back in Chicago, but he's here with the Padres. And he hits one high and deep to left field. Back goes Cabrera looking up, and how about that start for the Padres? Matt Caesar takes it out of the yard, and San Diego has a 1 0 lead. Welcome back to Chicago, Matt Caesar. 
Well, he just gets a fastball and absolutely turns on it. The bats have been consistent. That's why Andy Green has inserted him on the top of the lineup as Manny Margot is out of the lineup. But beautiful swing and the extension. One to nothing, Padres on top. The fast start, and here is Corey Spangenberg. You're the starter, Miguel Gonzalez, right now. You got to be shaking your head. You haven't even got settled in first well, pitch. Having the last two starts, and the last two starts have been losses. That's what the Padres have to do is jump on top. Softly lined a one hopper to first base, and tagging the bag is Jose Abreu, retired Spanja Burke. For the first out here in the first inning, and that'll bring up Will Myers. Myers at 299, eight homers, and 23 runs batted in. He'll take the strike. Well, the DH tonight, kind of a strange thing for him. He used to playing every night and it's kind of been uh, passed around here a little bit. Schiff was getting a start in Texas as the DH. Then last night it was John Harris Solarte. Tonight it is Myers. And it has given Andy Green the opportunity to kind of move it around and get some guys off defensively. Yeah, knowing Andy Green probably came in with a plan at the start of the road trip. And knowing he had the DH to play with, try to get some guys off their feet. These guys have been grinding. Just missed, framed there by Marbe, and he was trying to keep it there. Hoping the home plate umpire David Rackley would throw that right arm up, but call the ball. Takes again, close pitch again, but not getting that outside corner. Now Gonzalez has struggled with his breaking stuff, and it's been consistency with the breaking ball. It's going to be interesting to see how the Padres do that. He likes to set up the fastball with two strikes. Last home five starts for him. He's five and zero oh with a 1.27, and he walks Myers here with one down in the inning. So it's been a comfortable place for him here. His last three at home, and that's been good for him. And tough start tonight, though. Home run allowed by Matt Caesar, trying to find his bearings here in the first inning. Is Harris Salarte is coming up. Doc Cooper, the longtime pitching coach, under several managers here now in Chicago. Very, good, very good reputation throughout the game, Doc Cooper. Just going to say, he and Darren Balsley have a lot of similarities. I mean, guys that have such great reputations in the game that they supersede any managerial changes over the years and that's been the case here in Chicago. Yeah you think how important that is and especially both of these teams that are in some growing stages where they're developing but also they're trying to get people to be interested in coming there. Don Cooper is probably one of those guys that if you're looking at a free agent and you're getting an opportunity why not go out there and try to get a free agent that needs to have a pitching coach like that. Is a guy that has always had his starters work quickly. That's one thing that uh, broadcasters have always enjoyed. Well, you constantly <laughs> think about Mark Burley. <laughs> Absolutely. Set a tone. Yes. And over the years here, he had Jake Peavy as well for a bit, and uh, Evan Floyd. There have been some very good pitchers coming through here. Yeah, and there's a lot to that as well. I'm, I'm surprised that a lot of pitching coaches don't adapt to that. Maybe it's because the pitchers don't like that. They like to set their own tone. But from the hitter's perspective, that's uncomfortable when guys want to work quickly. And you tell me, but from a defensive standpoint, the defense approves it very much. 100%. That's such a great point because you want to be involved defensively. You have a pitcher that works quickly, also throws strikes, pitches to contact. That helps. One down, Myers with a relatively short lead over there at first base. Smarte ahead in the count, 2 and 0. Oh. And there's ball three, three and zero. Oh. Well, early in this game, you've seen a tight strike zone, which that means offensively, you have to make sure you get him to the center of the plate. Seven straight balls here thrown by Miguel Gonzalez. Green light. 
Nope, taken all the way, and he takes a strike over the outside corner. A lot of these pitchers against the Padre offense, when they get into hitters' counts, they throw a lot of off speed pitches. White Sox shifting here on Solarte on the right side of the infield. Throw to first, and Myers appear to be leaning in the other direction, but he does get back. He's getting a leadoff home run by Matt Caesar to start the night. Home run to left field. His career home run to open up a game for Caesar. A 3 1 to Salarte, but first another check on Myers, and that one a little closer. Quick feet by Gonzalez. And also, when you pull that throw, it enables that first baseman to apply the tag a little sooner. Bray is kind of doing what we saw Myers do a little bit during spring training. That's not stand directly on the bag over there at first. And that's why the tag was kind of on the legs on the way back because he's off the bag at first base. Not quite as far as what Will was doing during spring training. There goes Myers, pitches outside, and that's ball four to Solarte. Back to back walks allowed by Miguel Gonzalez. So now two on with one away, and Gonzalez. Looks like he's getting squeezed here a little bit by home plate umpire David Rackley. Well, it looks like he's trying to get a feel for his pitches as well, and he has been very erratic. And for the Padres, all that does is tell me when I get in the batter's box, I want to have a 2 0 3 1 approach right from the get go. Doesn't mean you're not aggressive, but you have to be very particular what you're trying to get after. Two on, one away, and it brings up Ryan Schimpf. 73 with nine homers, 18 runs batted in for Ryan. 34th game he's been in this season. The first six starts of the year for Miguel Gonzalez allowed only two first inning runs. He's already given up one here tonight. And virtually behind with everybody here. Two year old right hander, making his seventh start of the year. In the air, foul off to the left, and it's one and one. That's what I like about Ryan Chip. That's a mistake. You know, the command is wavering. You're looking at a 3 1 2 0 approach. Love to get off to a good start here, get a few runs in this first inning, and get to this White Sox starter. Gonna set the tone for the evening. High strike call that time, and it's one and two. Miguel Gonzalez spending the first four years of his major league career in a Baltimore Orioles uniform. Second year here with the White Sox. Last year, five and eight in 24 starts. For the White Sox, 3.73 earned run average. Popped up. Coming from first base, Jose Abreu will stumble a bit, but reach back to make the catch for the second out. Infield fly rule in effect, two down here in the first. Myers at second, Solarte at first, and that'll bring up Austin Hedges. One eighty four with seven homers and seventeen runs batted in for the Padres catcher. Start for the Padres tonight. Matt Caesar with a solo home run, first pitch of the ball game, taken out of the yard. The Padres enjoy a one nothing lead, chance to add on here. Legends, the sixth member of the Padres to bat in the first inning, and the curveball drops in there for strike one. Good for the Padres to start off the last three games scoring in the first inning, but they have to continue. And the strength of this White Sox club. Are the relievers? So 
and try to capitalize as much as possible. Swing and a miss and Hedges down 0 and 2. Austin with seven home runs. That is tied with the Tigers' James McCann for the most. Any catcher in the majors this season. And all those home runs have come since the middle of April, April the 15th, when he got his first of the year. Off the end of the bat, protects the plate, and fouls it back. Back to back cutters by Gonzalez. That's the Padres fans here tonight. Settling in for a three game series between the Padres and the White Sox. Their league play here from the south side. 0 2. On the ground, and the third baseman, Frazier Pixon, fires to second for the fourth shot that ends the inning. But a home run by Matt Caesar gets the night started. First pitch of the ball game taken out of the yard to left. And the Padres have jumped on top one to nothing. White Sox are coming up. To the bottom of the first inning we go. And we check out the White Sox starting nine. Larry Garcia leading it off and in shortstop with Melky Cabrera in left field batting second. Jose Abreu at first base. Obviously, El Garcia in right field with Todd Frazier at third. Matt Davidson is the DH. Yomer Sanchez at second base. Omar Narbe will do the catching. And it is Willie Garcia at center field who bats ninth. On the mound for the Padres tonight, Jolie Chassin. Making his fifth start on the road and watch how he sets up his slider, especially against the right handed hitters tonight. In six and six and seven strong innings tonight, backing Clayton Richards' effort last night of seven. And Garcia leading it off and he will take strike one. They got to be careful when you say Garcia tonight because there are three of them <laughs> in the White Sox starting lineup. This is Lieri who leads it off and then. Obviously, Yal Garcia and Willie Garcia. Swing and a miss, and it's 0 2. Well, Andy Green kind of rearranged the rotation, and this was largely the reason here tonight. Well, I think that was probably smart, especially going against the Rangers who struggled against the left handers and vice versa. The Jocene hits Garcia, was ahead of him 0 2, just trying to come inside, gets him on the leg. What he wanted to do. You saw the reaction of Chassin. He just pulls this pitch, trying to go for that two seamer at the hip that comes back. It was a fastball at 90 miles an hour. And he goes down to first base. And he'll bring up Melky Cabrera. So you're saying I can just say Garcia tonight, and I'm probably well, going to be right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now you got to be a little more specific tonight. Because <laughs> you could be talking about 
the right fielder, center fielder, or shortstop. Well, Melky Cabrera hitting at 235, two homers, 13 runs batted in. And his second home run of the year last night, a three run shot, and it off Phil Hughes. This will bounce away from Hedges and up to second base goes Garcia. Hobbling, yes, but he does get the second base on the wild pitch. Been hit by the pitch and still smarting a little bit. Back to back fastballs, one pulled, the other one just spiked. Very difficult for Austin Hedges. Tried to pick that. Can't really expect the catchers to drop down to their knees and anticipate that pitch. Cabrera hits a one hopper to the backhand of Spangenberg who fires to first for the out. But a productive out as Larry Garcia takes third base. Well, defensively tonight for San Diego and behind Jolie Chassin. Brought to you by Lincoln. It's Alec Cordova getting a start out there in left field. Matt Caesar getting his first start. The Padres uniform in center. Hunter Renfro in right. Ryan Schiff in third. Eric Ibar at shortstop. Corey Spangenberg who just made that play at second. And yet, Harris Salarte getting his 28th career start at first base with Austin Hedges doing the catching. One down, Garcia at third. Here's Jose Abreu. Abreu coming in, hitting a 275 on the year. Five homers, 17 runs batted in. Fifteen games, he has really picked it up a notch. Three sixty-seven, the average. It's a ground ball down the line, third, but foul. Not by a lot, and a foul ball down that third baseline. Let's see how close that is. This is a perfect angle. Just off. A good call. Got to be careful of Abreu, especially in RBI situations. He's been powering up lately too. Last 11 games, all of his five home runs. Primarily the everyday first baseman. 29th start at first base for him this year. Couple as a DH and numbers with runners in scoring position for him. Nine runs batted in. Well, he's a smart hitter and he will take the ball to the middle of the field. Obviously, he has pull power. Fouls that off to the right, not a play. You see the Padres trying to crowd him in this situation. His RBI guys, middle of the order, always have a conscious effort of using the big part of the field. Back to back pitches inside, and you can see Chassin trying to. Really work that inside part. Well, you're pretty big in there on the right side, six foot three, listed at 260. He goes to the slider here. This is to third, caught by Schiff. No advance for Garcia at third base, and that's out number two of the inning. That's a big out. We touched on in our open the success with the slider and how you try to set that up. See in our tracks, 81 miles an hour, but perfect location off the end of the bat. Easy reaction for Ryan Schimpf and a big out for Chassin. Two down here in the first inning brings up Abishiel Garcia. 42 average, five homers, 24 runs batted in. So a terrific beginning to the year. This is career best start for him. The consistency factor. Has been eluding Garcia in his career. He can run too. He is tied for second in infield hits with seven so far in the year. For a big man. Yeah, and he's big. You're right. He's tied for fourth in average in the American League at 342. Look at the AL leaders. There is that 342. Gene Segura on top of that list with the Seattle Mariners. Was a player with over 200 hits a year ago. When Segura was with the Diamondbacks, now a Mariner. Well, and that was one of the trades that was under the radar, too. As you think about Gene Segura had a good year in Arizona. Yes, a great place to hit. Goes up to Seattle. 
really torn it up. Think about Garcia though. Anything anytime you're matching a Mike Trout. You're having a pretty good year. You're doing something right. <laughs> He's done something right with two outs and runners in scoring position as well. He's trying to prevent that. That'll be very Whoa. close. Could have been strike three. Well, we've seen David Rackley, and he has been tight in the strike zone, right on the bottom part. But you remember the first half of the first inning, he did not give that to Gonzalez at either. Two down, Garcia third base. Obviously, Al Garcia at the plate, and he will lift it in the air to shallow right. Out goes Spangenberg. In comes Renfro, and Renfro will make the catch that gets Chassin out of the jam. Done with one. Padres have a one nothing lead. Between the Astros and Yankees, and last night, Jake Marisnik with the tying run coming to the plate, Jacoby Ellsbury and Brian McCann slapping that tag on to end the ball game and preserve an Astros 3 to 2 win. Of course, McCann coming back to face his old team, the Yankees, and he gets Ellsbury at the plate. What a way to finish that game. Yeah, that had to feel really good. What an absolute hose. And the Houston Astros continue to be the story of baseball. Major League leading 24 wins. Kai Bart leading it off here in the second inning for the Padres, and he pops it up foul. Backhand out of play. Well, we've seen on this road trip, especially that home run against you, Darvish, that Eric Ibar has been firing on that high fastball. Four home runs, eight runs batted in. And safely in 12 of the last 15 games. Kind of changed his mind in the middle. That change up and it's 0 2. Got a home run in the Texas series. Padres winning one of the four games of that four game series, the home and home. On the ground, kind of hooked it towards second base, and Yomer Sanchez throws him out. Take a look at the keys to the game brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. Well, for the Padre offense, early success, which we saw with Matt Caesar starting off with that home run. The White Sox bullpen ranked second in Major League Baseball with a 2.29 ERA and handled the Sox middlemen, as you saw that last half of the inning. Jose Abreu, Avacial Garcia, and Todd Frazier. Those are the keys because they can power the baseball. One down here in the second brings up Hunter Renfro. Second straight game that Renfro has batted from the number eight spot in the Padres order. Yeah, they get taking the pressure off, and we've seen a little more patience from Hunter Renfro. Also, watching his batting practice, trying to take it that opposite field approach, see the ball longer. 
Lines this down the left field line. It'll be a fair ball headed towards the corner. Melky Cabrera going to play it as Renfro into second base. And Cabrera had a little trouble getting it out of there, and he does. As a double for Renfro with one down here in the second inning. Well, such a good sign for Hunter Renfro. I talked about the opposite field approach. Watch the pitch. A slow breaking ball, being able to handle and stay back. Let that travel a little bit longer. And when you see that side swing, watch the head down. Right down here, which you see continues to try to work through the baseball. Let that ball travel, especially the breaking ball. Perfect approach by the young right fielder. One out runner at second base and it brings up Alan Cordoba. That's out of the nine spot tonight, getting the start in left field for San Diego. Cordoba will take strike one. So hard, Don, sometimes to ask power hitters and guys that have drove, driven the ball, which Hunter Renfro did in El Paso last year. We saw him in a small sample size at the end of the year. But that doesn't mean you have to pull every ball. You have to be able to show that you'll go the other way and stay back on that breaking ball. You know, there's, there's, there's times where you see Hunter Renfro that looks like he's swinging at every pitch. Well, that sometimes you need a calming factor. And how you get that done is think opposite way, which that enables you to stay on the baseball a little bit longer. Doesn't mean you're not going to pull the baseball, but he's in a better position. Well, Miguel Gonzalez, who at one point had thrown seven straight balls, thrown 14 straight strikes right now. And here's another. This one fouled off to the right out of play. Batting with Renfro at second base, one down here in the second inning for the Padres. And Gonzalez, who has one out here in the second, about to throw his 30th pitch of his outing. Cordoba hits it on the ground, is short of the backhand. Garcia is going to third, and they got Renfro hung up. Going to try to run around long enough. He's out of the base path. He'll be out. He's going to say trying to run and get in a rundown long enough to allow Cordoba to get second base, but he could not as he jumped out of the base path, which made him out, and that's out number two. Uh, watch Hunter Renfro at second base. When the ball's in front of you, you can't hesitate. He hesitates and then just goes and gets in a rundown. You're already in scoring position. Make that ball go through. Mistake by the rookie. Six five four on the put out. Isn't the rule of thumb if the ball is hit to your right, you stay there, right? Second base. Now you got to see it through. And yes, it was a hard smash, but your early reactions, it's okay to have that first reaction, but just hesitate and go back. So two down, Cordoba is at first base, held on over there by Abreu. Cordoba reaching on the fielder's choice, and we'll check on him right away. And Matt Caesar Homer tonight, uh, leadoff home run for the Padres. Last Padre to home of the first pitch, Homer on the first pitch of a game. Going to go back to 2012 and Kristen Norfield being in a Dodger Stadium against Clayton Kershaw. Oh, Kristen Norfield loved watching him play. It's been a little while. It has. Bud bid and off the mound quickly is Gonzalez. He'll throw the first, did not panic at all, and that ends the inning. Padres leave the base runner, but at the end of an inning and a half, San Diego on top, one nothing.
nothing Padres lead as we head to the bottom of the second inning. Julie Chassin, we've talked a lot about the importance of his slider, but we've also mentioned that it all depends on his fastball. How important is it? Well, he had two bullpens between his last start and now because of the extended time. What did he focus on? He focused on fastball command. Darren Balsley said they did the same thing several outings ago, right before his outing on April 19th. In that game, he went eight innings, allowed no runs on three hits. He's hoping that he can repeat it here tonight. And Mark, as you talked about, it all depends on getting that fastball over so that he can get to that slider, guys. Yeah, I think I agree with you. Thanks, Ken. You think about it, too. It's not necessarily strikes. It's that quality pitch with, with both sides of the plate for Chassin tonight. Dealing with Todd Frazier trying to bunt his way on, and he almost was out of the box and that hit him. But, uh, he was on the move, but apparently stayed in the box. Just had a play like that take place in Texas. And that was close on the bunt bit. Very close from the Todd Father. It's one of my favorite nicknames <laughs> in the game. The Todd Father. <laughs> Whoever created that nickname, uh, it's, that's brilliant. Upright stance deep in the box on the right side. The Todd Father. Yeah, Todd Father, you can throw the breaking ball, but if it's elevated, it enables him to stay on the ball a little bit easier. Slider down and away. Hey, Swains, I got a question for you. Let's Earlier, you guys were talking about pitchers working quickly. Now, I always did, and one of the reasons I did, and maybe this was my imagination, but I'm curious from a hitter's standpoint. If you see a pitch right away for me to work quickly you still have that pitch in your vision when I make the next pitch now yep. if I wait too long whatever I just threw you is not going to be as effective in terms of changing the speed of your bat does that make sense is that something that you actually felt well as hitter's perspective scan you, you want to you want to dictate that pace and it's harder to do that now you have to stay in the batter's box so a guy that works quickly now is going to be able to make it very uncomfortable. To short eye bar on the run. Nice play. Eye bar able to make that transfer from the glove to the bare hand, and he throws that Frazier. You know, I think that to your point, Scan, that just from the hitter's perspective, when a guy works quickly, it, it sometimes can help you without they would taking the thinking out. But you don't want to be uh, have a quick pace, especially this day and age. You see a lot of guys using the leg kick, all of that. I think Clayton Richard does a phenomenal job of setting the tone. Especially when he gets to strike one out of the first couple of pitches that we saw last night. But I was always wondering if I'm trying to change your eye speed and I throw you a fastball at 95 and I work as quickly as I can and the next pitch is a changeup, isn't that going to have more of an effect on you than if I throw a pitch at 95 and now it's not till 20 or 25 seconds later that you see that change up? Or well, is that just my imagination? Yeah, that's just, you set a tone as a hitter. It doesn't, if I'm, you're throwing the velocity, it's not necessarily the velocity, it's just you're, you're being uncomfortable, you're being rushed. Like a lot of guys as hitters want to really set that tone themselves and if they don't have that ability against a Mark Burley or Clayton Richard that's thrown a lot of strikes, setting the pace, very hard to to get that rhythm as a hitter. You know what always surprised me also swings I would try to work quickly on guys and there might be one guy on, on a team or every other team that actually step out of the box on me and force me to slow down but I was surprised that more guys didn't do that. Yeah. Is there a reason they don't. Yeah there, there's because they don't think of that they're thinking of what they have to do mechanically and there's too many thoughts in those in that batter's box. Thinking's overrated swings. Yeah. Exactly Don't right. Don't think, just throw, Scan. That's what they kept telling me, and I kept <laughs> thinking, that's why I'm here now. <laughs> no, that's why I was a utility guy, too. I got jammed, even if they worked slowly. Well, the numbers last night for Clayton Richard made no decision as it turned out. There's a strike in there. Seven innings, five hits, one run. Deserved a better fate, really, last night. Really, one mistake. And it. it was to Napoli for the home run. There's ball four. Pitch Chassin one and doesn't get. And Matt Davidson earns a walk here against Chassin with one out in the second inning. First walk allowed by Chassin. He'll bring up Gilbert Sanchez, the second baseman. 288, a home run. Six runs batted in for Sanchez. 
May so far. Sanchez hitting at 400, eight for his last 20. So made 12 starts at second base, and he's also appeared a few games at third and a couple times as a DH. Sanchez swing at the first pitch. Chassin trying to start a double play. Soft toss to second, and then a throw to first that is not in time. Kind of threw a changeup to second base. A little harder, and they would have been able to turn the double play, but because of that soft toss, Ibar had to hurry the throw and not in time as Sanchez beats it out at first. Well, Chassin feels this correctly, but I don't think he gets a handle of the ball. He ends up throwing that changeup to Ibar. He tries to make up time. Had a really nice transfer, but it didn't get the ball quick enough. And see, he even throws a knuckleball, but didn't get the time to grip the baseball, which a lot of middle infielders love to do. Two down, Sanchez at first, Omar and Narve coming up here. Sanchez back to the bag, Solarte keeping that tag on him. 255, no homers, three runs batted in. Last nine games, though, he has been hitting well. 10 for his last 30, 333. The guy who's walked more than he has struck out this season. Walked 10 times, struck out nine. Well, right there, you see the fastball command that Bob Scanlon was talking about. Even though that pitch is a ball off the plate, that's perfectly located. Try to gain some information against this young catcher. There for a strike, one and one. Well, they really quickened up there with the slide step. That 1-1 one, one count is the indication. I think that's the swing count for me. You start taking that, you get to 2-1, you're in a better position. You're going to get a quality strike here. If you expose out of the strike zone, 1-2, and it's in the pitcher's hands. You put a close eye on Sanchez at first base. Even 30 pitches here, and an inning in two-thirds for Chassin. Agree on the curveball. Shakes off to the curveball. That's in the dirt. I see wants him to check. They do not. First game of a three game series between the Padres and the White Sox here tonight in Chicago. Lead off home run by Matt Caesar in the first inning, first pitch of the ball game. Sox have a runner at first, two down, and 3 1 pitch into the air to right field. Renfro's got a play, and he comes in now and makes it to end the inning. Through two tonight from Chicago, the Padres have a 1 0 lead.
All right, Mike and Tony, thanks very much. Padres have a one nothing advantage here into the third inning, and Miguel Gonzalez back on the mound, 32 pitches deep into his outing. And with two, three, and four for the Padres in the inning, Spangenberg, Myers, and Solarte. Spangenberg ground that one foul. McCann with that home run that uh, you just saw. Six on the year. James McCann won more. And you got Austin Hedges, Salvador Perez, and James McCann tied up with seven each. Well, that's got to feel good for Brian McCann to go back to Yankee Stadium and hit a bomb. He's got a nice start. It's 272 coming into tonight. But you think about just getting that veteran catcher to be able to stabilize that roster in the pitching core. Of the Houston Astros. They've gotten off to a really good start. Miguel Gonzalez, 20 straight strikes, make it 21. Is a grounder that gets to the shortstop. Garcia's throw will be late. Too much speed from Spangenberg. And there's a board to begin things here in the third inning. They've got a piece of the glove of Todd Frazier. Third baseman tried to cut it off. Garcia got it on the backhand, and then Spangenberg beats it out with a good speed. Yeah, he thought this was a changeup, maybe even a split finger that. Corey Spangenberg puts into play. Saw so Frazier trying to get it on that short hop. Gets back to Garcia, but the speed of Spangenberg. It's a base hit for Spangenberg. And then it brings up Will Myers, who walked in the first inning. I think Corey needs to show that he will steal a base in this situation. Why? You want to buy Will Myers some fastballs. Just sit there, and yes, you don't want to run into outs when Will Myers is up there, but sometimes you can do something early in the game to try to drive that home to these guys that you have to be able to throw Will Myers a fastball. For the first, and Spangenberg gets back to the bag. Two walks so far allowed by Miguel Gonzalez, and they came back to back in the first inning. Myers and Solarte. Go ahead here, 1 0. 22 straight strikes from Gonzalez prior to the ball to Myers. Back to throwing strikes again, 1 and 1. Full night tonight in Chicago. Starting the game at 57 degrees, and that's when the sun was still kind of with us. It's not anymore. It's a little chilly tonight. <laughs> sun has set, and it's on the cool side. Over at first base, Spangenberg back on the bat. Now, so far, a pretty good pitching matchup here tonight between Chassin and Gonzalez. Yeah, you think about it on cold nights how this ball is going to react, the feeling of the pitcher, but also the hitters. The Padres haven't played in too many cold games this year. This one foul back. How big of a difference is that as far as slickness on the ball? Well, you, you know what? Now you, it's not offensively, it's really how you handle the back. And you see a lot of these guys that have the taped wrap. You can see Will Myers, he goes with the bare handed grip, but also. Those wraps help those guys be able to use that in the feel of the bat on a cold night. Very different for the Padres this uh, tonight. Of course, you grew up playing in New England, <laughs> and it wasn't fun. I had, <laughs> I had a wrap, I had batting gloves, just to get a feel. I can't imagine that it was uh, all that much summer in Maine. No, <laughs> no, it, it, collegiately. It, Honestly, when you think about the, when you talk about weather and playing collegially at the University of Maine, there were times where I was in center field and I had to shade my eyes from the snow squalls into my eyes. <laughs> Not the best time to play baseball. Not conducive. Yeah, jam job here, a little pop up to the first baseman and Bray, you he'll make the catch. And broke in the bat, Myers kind of taking inventory on it. As he is out number one of the third inning. It indicated earlier in the game how Gonzalez is attacking these Padres. He's had a feel, as you said, Don, throwing those consecutive strikes the last inning, making the adjustment. 
but he really loves to throw that fastball. Early, I mean, late in the count and setting the fastball up, pitching backwards. One down, Spangenberg at first base. Jan Herbis Solarte. Getting a second look at Miguel Gonzalez tonight. And walked against him in the first. Pitches for Gonzalez, only two swing and misses. Wow, a lot of contact. Yeah, not a lot of not a velocity guy, but she's also commanded it much better after the first. Red Sox are shifting on Solarte on the right side, but they keep it tight to the infield. Chance for a double play. It's in the dirt, nicely blocked by Narbe. Starting to see him go to that split finger a little bit more. Up here, second time through. He's trying to change that up, change the different levels, as Bob Scanlon talked about earlier, how you're going to be able to elevate at times, but also show that that secondary stuff is going to set up the fastball late. Infield hit for Spangenberg got the inning started. Myers popped out to first. One on, one out. And Solarte on a 3 0 pitch here. Dallas has been very careful in dealing with him in both at bats. And he'll walk him again. Second time Solarte has earned the free pass. Baseball fans, tomorrow baseball is back on FS1. Chris Bryant and the Chicago Cubs do battle with the St. Louis Cardinals in one of baseball's biggest rivalries. Coverage begins at noon Pacific on FS1. First and second one away. Some Padres fans here tonight. And a guaranteed great field in Chicago in one of the three game series. And there's Ryan Schimpf. Padres have had at least two base runners in every inning so far in this game. And as they batted the third with runners at first and second. Shift popped out to the first baseman, Jose Abreu, first time up, and he'll take strike one over that inside corner. Nine home runs for Ryan Shift on the year so far. At 20 last year, in his first year in the big leagues. The amount of extra base hits for him amazing 20 home runs and, and, and very few singles. And I, and I saw the power numbers in Triple A. You wonder if it was going to translate because El Paso, great place to hit. Right. And then you see the 20 home runs, the extra base hits as you talked about. I really believe the power is real. Obviously, the offensive numbers have to come up. When he squares the ball up, it goes a long way. Swing and a miss here, and he strikes out. So the first strikeout for Miguel Gonzalez is out number two with the top of the third inning. So two down, two on, and that'll bring up Austin Hedges. Rounded into a field of choice in the first inning. So 0 for 1 for the Padres catcher. For Austin, 273 with a home run, a couple of RBIs, and a second look at Miguel Gonzalez. Is that a good feel for that slow curveball? Pitch number one. Here's a fair ball down the third base line into the left field corner. Brown from second comes Spangenberg. He will score. Trouble with it is Cabrera trying to score from first is Solarte. The throw will be close and not in time. Padres get two runs. On the double for Austin Hedges and San Diego jumps on top three to nothing. Well, that was a close play at the plate. Throw beat Solarte, but apparently he eluded the tag. 
Well, it looks like a high changeup to Hedges, and he smashes this past Todd Frazier for a fair ball. Now it gets crazy. Hits the chair down there in left field. Melky Cabrera comes up and throws a cannon to home plate, but a nice slide by Salarte. Now Don, they've been looking for that two out knock, especially with guys and runners in scoring position. That fourth double for Hedges was a big hit. And both these teams tonight had been a combined 0 for 11 with men on base until that two run double by Austin Hedges has given the Padres a 3 nothing advantage. And here's Eric Ibar. We'll get a look at the slide by Hervis Salarte at the plate. Well, Salarte, you have to read the catcher where he is going to receive that ball, and he does. And head first slides in that back part of home plate. Got to feel faster with beat DH in yesterday. <laughs> in the dirt and blocked by Narbe. You know, it's a rule that's only been around a couple of years, but that is a perfect example of how the catcher cannot block home plate. Yeah. Get in the way unless he has the ball. You have that open lane to make that slide that this Larte did. And it's such a good point because you have to be able to give that runner that sliding lane. Not a big fan of that rule. It definitely came into play that play. In there for a strike and that fooled Ibar. He's kind of ducking out of the way. He did 50 pitches for Miguel Gonzalez. Two down here in the third inning. On the ground to second base. Sanchez plays a tough hop and throws the first to retire the side. Well, Austin Hedges. Coming up with a two run double down the line in left field. It scores Fangenberg and Salarte. Padres have a 3 0 lead after two and a half. For Jolie Chassin as his offense comes up with a pair in the top half of this the third inning and it'll bring up Willie Garcia is going to lead it off Austin Hedges driving in those two runs last inning. Some timely hitting for the Padres and yeah, that's huge too it gives Jolie Chassin some runs to work with. And Willie Garcia center fielder bats out of the nine spot. Red Sox. In here, having lost a season high five consecutive games. Longest streak since last year. And the starters really have been bad. 0 and 5 with a 6.39 earned run average in the last five games during 
the street. Nine, one and two here for the White Sox in the third. And this evens up now at two and two. 35 average for Willie Garcia out of the ninth spot for the White Sox. Line to left and Cordoba dives, knocks it down on a hop. And a wide turn at first, but Garcia will throw the brakes on and he's aboard here to begin things in the bottom of the third inning with a base hit to left. Well, I tell you what, you see Cordoba in left field after you see the pitch, the high slider. Garcia absolutely tears the cover off this, but in left field, Cordoba coming in and blocking that baseball, keeping it front. Watch Cordoba in front. He's in no man's land. That's a dangerous play if it gets by you. Did a nice job keeping that ball in front. Gary Garcia now stands in, bunts at it, and fouls it off. We saw the leg kick bunt there. I don't see that move too many times. <laughs> well, he comes in riding the four game hitting streak at 375 during the streak. Swing it away and sending one to deep right field back towards the wall and gone. Went from bunting to homering. And it's a one run game. Garcia with a two run shot, his third home run of the year. Two quick runs put on the board here by the Chicago White Sox. Let's see the pitch. Looked like a slider down and in. And Garcia was in perfect position. You could see that uppercut swing. Right in the seats and right. With a two run shot for Leori Garcia. And it's a one run game now. Elke Cabrera. Oh for one, grounding out of second base in the first inning. Well, Garcia had only two home runs before this season in the majors, and this year now with that home run has three on the year. We're not out of May yet. Wow. Cabrera rips this foul with a 2 0. -oh. Sit down the right field line foul. And his first at bat, he hit a hot smash to Corey Spandenberg, who made a nice play. Yesterday, the splits for Melky Cabrera. Up to a slow start batting average wise as we foul this off to the left. And second in the order, Rick Renteria and the White Sox. Put two runs put on the board here by the White Sox in the third inning. Pitch. As if jumping back off the plate. Oh, I like that pitch. And the reason why, with that 2 2 pitch, he was late on that fastball. Trying to get that comebacker for strike three. Soft ground ball down the first baseline. The throw first in time. He Chassin throws out Melky Cabrera. The first down here in the bottom of the third inning. Swinging bunt there, one down. It's time now for our Arco top tier player profile. And we'll take a look at Jose Abreu. 13 multi hit games for the former rookie of the year. Leads Major League Baseball nine multi hit games since 
April the 23rd, Starling Castro and Corey Dickerson on top of that category. You know, Escobar and Gene Segura tied with Jose Abreu. Multi hit categories. Not have a hit tonight. Lined out to third base in the first inning, 0 for 1. On the ground, third as Ship cut it off, spins and fires off the mark, but Salarte comes off the bag and applies the tag. Nice play by Jan Hervis Salarte, making his 28th start at first base. Nice adjustment, who was going to be off the line, and he'll slap that tag on, drop number two. We've seen Brian Schiff at times not throw the ball particularly well at third base. This is up the line, but Yarn here with Solarte, uh, normally at first base with Will Myers DHing tonight, comes off and makes a nice play. It's a dangerous play when you're going up that line. I was going to say the runner coming right at you. Came of the tag as it turned out. A nice play by Yarn Herbis. Two down in the inning. And the CL Garcia fly out to right field in the first inning. 0 for 1. The flare out to left center field incoming is Caesar and he can't make the catch off the glove and Garcia scampers to second where he will be safe. The diving bid by Caesar gets up and throws to second and Garcia was thinking double all along as he was motoring it to second base and for a big man he can run. He's got himself a double here with two down in the inning. Well what an effort in center field by Matt Caesar. See him playing on that right field side goes a long way. Catches this ball on the ground, kicks it out of the glove. And to your point, Don Garcia running all the way, especially with those two outs and getting the second base. How about the speed for him? He's a big wow. man. He looked up and he was well on his way to second base. Fifth double of the year for him, and now Todd Frazier will take strike one. You're grounded out to the shortstop, Eric Ibar, in the second inning. They got Willie Garcia leading off this inning with a single. Yuri Garcia with a two run home run. And got Abisal Garcia with a double. All three Garcias have at least a hit in his own. I tell you what. That's a lot. <laughs> On the ground at third, Ship kind of rounded behind it. The throw is much better this time and had plenty of time and retires the side. But a two run shot for Leuri Garcia. It's now 3 2 Padre.
Hunter, we're gonna do some target practice. Let's try. Who's been the biggest influence on you baseball-wise? I think my dad. My dad, obviously, he didn't get a chance to play in college or anything, but he's been my coach from the time I was little and, and uh, helped me out other ways and uh, just been my best friend. For this and more on Michelle's afternoon of archery with Hunter Renfro, check out Padres POV presented by Nissan tonight after Padres Live on Fox Sports San Diego. Hunter leads it off here in the top of the fourth inning. New game now. Padres had a 3 0 lead. It's now 3 2 with the White Sox. Coming up with a couple runs. Renfro with a double his first time up. Now he hits one high and deep down the left field line. Will it stay fair? It is going to be a fair ball and a home run for Hunter Renfro. The call made by Chad Fairchild. The White Sox are perplexed as Todd Frazier looked down that left field line. He thought it was a foul ball. And he wants Rick Renteria to challenge it, but the call on the field is a home run for Hunter Renfro and a 4 2 Padres lead. See, they are going to challenge you. Now, the umpires are going to get together. They may not challenge you. They may just get together and make a decision. And this looks to be a foul ball. So, the umpires have gotten together. No challenge. And then they're going to call it a foul ball. I love that they get together on that. Obviously, you have replay that can go to that. But. got to be tough to just kind of take it in especially Hunter Renfro wishing that fair. Now the question is who had the best look at it. The guy that made the call down the third base line. <laughs> Chad Fairchild the other three guys talked about him. Well that's true and I think Todd Frazier had a good look at it as well. It's yes, third base he was, he was all over. <laughs> well, it's a count of one and one here and after running around all the bases. <laughs> Hunter's now get a bat again. He's got his hunting gear on over there. And a swing and a miss. Fastball that time, one and two. I, I need that uni for my open tomorrow. <laughs> Basketball? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? He's asking for it down. Chop to short. Garcia plays the high hop man. Low throw. Not dug out by Abreu. One throw will reach. Miss Q for Garcia on the throw. So lead runner on for the Padres here in the fourth inning. Back to back nights where Abreu has struggled over at first base. You got to give those infielders confidence. Last night dropped one in the air that was a big part of the game against the Twins. Here in the fourth, and Alan Cordoba coming up. We're grounding into a fielder's choice in the second inning. You spent a lot of time around Rick Renteria. Absolutely loved him, and uh, I'm glad he has another opportunity. Obviously, the, his first opportunity as a manager was on the north side of the Chicago Cubs. They changed and went with Joe Madden. Now he gets another opportunity here on the south side. Great baseball man. And a bunt bid here off the mound is Gonzalez. He'll fire to first. Going to be close, and it is in time. Well, Cordoba thought he had beaten it out. And he thinks he is safe. The call on the field is out by Larry Van Over, the first base umpire. And we'll see if Andy Green is going to challenge this, and he will. You can't blame him. You see Cordoba. Going down. It's a tough ending for the umpires because I think he beats that. Now hustling down the line, you can see oh, that yeah. left foot on the base before he even goes near the glove. Tough inning for the umpires. Cordoba immediately asked Andy Green to challenge that play. Another look. So, Cordoba is safe, and it is first and second with nobody out. When you 
love how Cordoba is trying to think the game. You see Johnny Washington having conversation with him about scenarios on the bases, but laying that bunt down, that checked up nicely and hustling down the line. So first hit for Cordoba. Cordoba had taken a hit away originally by the official scorer last time up, and now he gets one on a challenge. So he got runners at first and second. And it brings up Matt Caesar. Caesar with a home run on the first pitch of the ball game and then rounded out in his second at bat. And he'll take the breaking ball for strike one. League seasons eight minor league season for Rick Renteria served as the Padres first base coach and bench coach and the Cubs manager for one season 2014 before Joe Madden took over for the Cubs youth manager in Cubs history but bid and out from third is Frazier throw to first in time just over the shoulder of Caesar and a great job on the sacrifice bunt it's runners to second and third Check in with Bob Scanlon. You know, Don, one of the things that we've heard a lot from Andy Green and El Zinter about is the patience that these hitters need to show in keeping the opposing pitcher in the strike zone. Now, in talking to Al, he said they've done a really nice job the first time through the lineup facing the opposing pitcher, but the focus seems to wane as the game goes on. I think they're going to be pretty happy tonight. It doesn't look like they've been expanding the zone very much, and they've been able to put some runs on the board here in the later innings. Can we'll see how it goes here. Runners at second and third with one out and Corey Spangenberg standing in. Pitch inside and Spangenberg spin out of the way. Spangenberg has grounded out to first. We shot an infield hit and score. You think in this scenario, you're probably going to get a good pitch. You look at the on deck circle of Will Myers. Just on the outside corner. Here's Will. With the base open and Corey Spangenberg doesn't mean he's going to get a fastball right down the middle. But having protection behind you definitely changes this scenario. Goes a slider in here. Spangenberg sending it foul. They're playing about halfway right now, not all the way in here for the White Sox. Well, their speed on the bases: Hunter Renfro at third, Alan Cordova at second base. Probably thinking with the score the way it is, you don't want to magnify it by playing in and expose it. A little bit easier for the offensive. Sixty three pitches for Miguel Gonzalez through three and a third innings. Maybe the thought process defensively is a little more versatility, a little more range. Full count now. Blocked there by Narbet. Well, Gonzalez has shown, especially with a lot of the off speed pitches, that he'll go to that fastball late in the count. Pitch and a foul back. Uh, Spangenberg not letting that pass too close to take. Now this is when it really comes into play. You have Will Myers behind you. you Want to load the bases up for the Padres' best hitter. And throw at third. Cordoba at second. One out here in the fourth inning. Yeah, 
grounder foul good at bat here by Spanchberg fouling some pitches off and battling away against Gonzalez. Eight pitch of the at bat coming up for Corey Spanchberg. This one off, kind of biting in on him at 88 miles an hour. Yeah, a lot of the opposition has thrown that slider down and in to Corey Spangenberg. Saw a lot of it at Texas. I think at the mound here, Marve headed out. Remember Sanchez coming in from second base and Garcia from short. We have a 3 2 lead, but looking for more here in the fourth inning. Renteria, the pitching coach Don Cooper. Long at bat here for Spangenberg. He's fouled off the last four. Ooh, with two strikes on him. And the payoff pitch again. Spangenberg lifts a fly ball to left field. Lucky Cabrera getting himself set will make the catch. Renfro tags, but does not go. Good thing he didn't. He would have been out. Cabrera got it back in very quickly. As Renfro bluffed, trying to draw a throw, he did draw the throw. There are two outs in the fourth inning, and Don Cooper, the pitching coach, headed to the mound. I'd be very surprised if you. See them attack Will Myers in this situation. Just put him on. Why not? This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the San Diego Padres. They may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Two down, Renfro at third base with Cordoboot second, and we'll see what they're going to do here with Will Myers. They've got Hervis Solarte winning on deck. Old school Padre unis. I love those. Some more. Oh, yeah. They're going to start off by pitching to Myers here. We'll see how it goes. Uh, for Will Myers, this doesn't mean you just stand up there and see. If they're going to throw to you, that means that they could possibly throw a mistake. Draw that small box, almost a 3 0 scenario for a hitter. 70th pitch of the, the outing coming up here for Miguel Gonzalez. And that is low and away, and it is now 2 0. Now, this is surprising to me that they're even taking this chance. Takes the strike and it's two and one. And throw it third, quarter bit second, two down in the inning. One run game here as the Padres have a 3 2 lead. And Myers almost gets hit on the breaking ball, didn't do much. Well, out of the four pitches, he's made three mistakes. One was right down the middle, but the other ones were not located where he wanted them. I think Myers sits on a breaking ball here. To left center field and moving over is Cabrera. He will get there to end the inning. So they do pitch to Myers, and Myers flies out. Padres strand two, but lead it three to two.
Zimmerman has been outstanding so far and back at it again. Last year, 115 games hit 218 with 15 home runs. 33 games this year so far. He's already got 13 home runs and 35 runs batted in. He's had a great beginning of the year. Well, he was the face of the franchise when they started back in Washington and went through a boatload of injuries. And now you see the strength is back in his swing. Always had that approach, that right center approach. Almost a left handed pull header from the right side. But this year, he is putting on a show. Washington Nationals offense. You know, last of the fourth inning. Six, seven, and eight coming up here for the White Sox. Matt Davidson. Omar Sanchez and Omar Narbe scheduled to bat in the inning. On the field straight away on Matt Davidson. Walked in the second. The only free pass served up by Jolie Chassin. Davidson's got six home runs among AL rookies behind Aaron Judge and Trey Mancini. Fooled on that pitch and is down 0 and 2. Chassin giving up a base hit to Willie Garcia to begin the third, then Leori Garcia. It's a two run home run, and it's the White Sox on the board, makes it a one run game. Now swing and a miss by Davidson and Chassin gets his first strike out of the night. First K for Chassin is Davidson and brings up Yomar Sanchez. He's on a fielder's choice in the second inning. Hold for one. White Sox second baseman. Have done quite well in this game for the White Sox tonight. <laughs> you see it. Uh, we knew it was a themed Garcia night tonight. Three for four with the rest of the team without a hit. Sliced foul down the left field line, off to the left and out of play. Maybe after the game, maybe Cherry Garcia. You like that flavor <laughs> ice cream? <laughs> you know, I've never had it. I'm a fish food guy and I've never strayed. I'm not I'm not a fan of the Cherry Garcia as well. No. But you would think in Chicago with all the Garcias that we have yes. in the building. Yeah. Why not try it. You had fish food before. I have it's a, a big fan. Really good. This is on the ground diving in the third Chimp can't get it it's in the left. So Cordoba will get it back in but it's a one out base hit for Sanchez. Up Narby. Shifted all he could do. Driving down there at third base, but quickly by him. Narby, first time up, fly out to right field. Hitter coming in. Eighteenth start of the year for him. Runner goes and a little hit and run, but it's fouled off down the left field line out of play. So Sanchez is going to come on back. Herbis Salarte at first base. One out, one on. Running run at first base right now for the White Sox here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Now knowing Rick Retoria, he doesn't have that prototypical American League style. He asked these young hitters to be put in those hit and run situations, especially with a guy that has command like Chassin. Starter tonight with a 1 2 3 inning yet in this game. Now 
Padres leaving six men on base for the first four innings. The White Sox three. For their first three, they have a runner at first, one out here in the fourth. And a two-one throw over and just back safely is Sanchez. Good move by Shasin, almost got him. Now that's the challenge of being over there for Salarte at first base, a right-handed first baseman. Good pickoff move. The tendency is to reach out and catch the ball and then reach down to apply the tag rather than let the ball travel a little bit longer. Easier for left-handed first baseman. Runner goes, fouled off again. Down the left field line into the seats. Out to right, getting his second look at Chassin, waiting on a 2 2 pitch. Padres a double play deck. That'll miss away, full count. Uh, Fox tracks by Nissan, everything away. Sanchez would be running on the pitch. He is, and it's popped up foul ground from third comes Shen. And Ryan will make the catch in front of the White Sox dugout for the second out of the fourth inning. MLB.com at bat is your number one app for live Padres baseball. Stay connected with a fully customizable experience. Get Padres home screen icons and, and app features, as well as game day, live game video highlights, radio broadcast, statcast, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today. Two outs here in the fourth inning. Sanchez at first base and Willie Garcia. The batter is singled and scored in the third inning. Two stints this year for Garcia with the White Sox. He has played all three outfield positions so far for Rick Renteria. Up this last time from Triple A Charlotte on May the second. Been up earlier for three days, April 14th through the 16th. We'll check on first base and back to the bag is Sanchez. Well, it's been the Triple A affiliate for the White Sox now for a long time. Long time, yeah. Hitters paradise too. Did you play at Knights Castle? Ooh, I loved it. <laughs> Knights Castle, then Knights. after the game, maybe because you're in the Meyer League, maybe yeah. a little White Castle. Exactly. <laughs> Throw over and Solarte dives to keep that from going down the line. <laughs> Solarte. He's having fun. He's going crazy last night on the bench. Driving him nuts. Having trouble with Mr. T starter kid over there. <laughs> Four chains. <laughs> a lot of chains. <laughs> Throw over again. And he's back. These have been close. Sanchez gets time. Get some of the dirt out of there. Now last night, uh, uh, Herbert Solarte was the DH and he was bouncing all over the dugout. Oh. It's got to be so difficult for these guys, especially in National League, because it meant mentality wise, you're, you're just looking for things to do. Salarte was having fun on the bench. Did he go? No. They check at first base, and it's a count of 2 0. Oh. You see all those throws over trying to control the running game. But also enable himself to be able to throw that breaking ball. And keep Sanchez close. Swing and a miss. And Garcia now two and one. 60 
27 pitches for Chassin with two outs here in the fourth inning. Pitching with a one run lead right now for the Padres in the bottom of the fourth inning. Claim there by Hedges, but it's ball three. Garcia mentioned two stints here in his major league debut back in 2014 with the White Sox. Time call. Here, Chassin had decided on the slider 3 1. Yeah, and you don't know if Austin Hedges. Like that call. See if they go back to the slider. Yes, they do. And then it works for strike two, full count. You would think, Don, they would go back to that slider here. Seen some wild swings by Garcia. Pass ball away. Runner goes Garcia fouls it back. Running for Sanchez first with Narve up there and now Garcia. Got a full workout over there at first base. He's headed back. He'll be off again here two down and the count three and two. Which game break coming up Cardinals and Cubs. Runner goes, swing and a miss, and Chassin strikes out Garcia. Two strikeouts in the inning, two in the outing for Chassin. Padres have a three to two lead. We have played four full from the south side in Chicago. Padres by one. Thanks very much Mike and Tony back here in the south side of Chicago as Miguel Gonzalez went throw his 75th pitch. Padres have a 3 2 advantage and Hernandez Solarte leading it off as he cranks one foul down the left field line out of play. Yeah Don you think about that matchup St. Louis Cardinals and the Cubs. 
Well, surprising. The Cubs come in fourth place in that division, but St. Louis Cardinals got off to a slow start and really righted the ship. Mike Matheny's team has been playing consistent baseball. So Arte sends this one out towards deep right center field. Garcia going back out of the track to make the catch right in front of the wall. Banged into it and comes up a little bit lame out there in right center. Boy, at first he did not realize how well that ball was hit. He was headed sideways and then went back. And he makes the grab on the dirt of the track but then bangs into the wall. Now you see the route by Garcia and going back. And because of that route, he didn't get to the wall early enough. Comes up with that left foot jamming into the fence. Well, Garcia appears to be okay as he takes his spot back in center field. And this catch for the first out here of the fifth inning. Comes up Ryan Schimpf as the White Sox go into a shift on the right side of the infield. It's 0 for 2 tonight. He has popped out to first and struck out swinging. Fly ball left field shallow. Melky Cabrera coming in. He's playing pretty shallow anyway. And there are two outs in the fifth. It's now five in a row. Retired by Miguel Gonzalez. And that'll bring up Austin Hedges. Well, the pitch count coming in at 73 pitches through four innings. Miguel Gonzalez could use an economical inning, and so far so good. Two outs on four pitches here in the fifth. Austin Hedges, one for two, a two run double in the third inning. And that double was against the first pitch changeup, his last at bat. Drove in Spangenberg and Solarte in the third. and at the time gave the Padres a 3 nothing advantage. Red Sox have come back with two. Well, that's what he's indicated earlier in, in some games that's so Padre offense just those two out hits. They're damaging to the opposition. Good for Hedges to get off to a good start in this game. In the year to left field struck pretty well Cabrera going back onto the track and it is gone into the bullpen. Austin Hedges with a home run to give the Padres a 4 2 lead. Austin Hedges with his eighth home run of the year, third RBI of the night, and the Padres have a 4 2 lead. Well, Austin is always hunting that fastball, but he's had some success against the breaking ball tonight. This looks like a little bit of cutter on the outside part of the plate. Watch that head down and the power. See him going through that baseball and being able to elevate that baseball into the left field bullpen. Austin Hedges is having a fabulous night. Now Eric Ibar slaps it foul off to the left. So Miguel Gonzalez gets two quick outs to begin the fifth inning, but then gives up the blast to Hedges. Second home run of the night for the Padres. Of course, Matt Caesar did a home run on the first pitch of the ball game tonight. Back in the first inning. Now a soft liner to right field, and that'll drop for a base hit for Eric Ibar. His first hit of the night. A two out single. Now pounding Ibar inside all night long. Veteran shortstop knows how to counter that and fights it off into right field. Fourteenth time in 37 Padres games this year. The Padres have hit two or more home runs. And that's the way they've been scoring runs, hitting home runs. And they have, and it was good to see. Those two out RBIs are killers. They're backbreakers. And Green was talking a little bit about that in the last homestand about the home run and how. He'd like to find other ways to score because relying on it is tough to come by. Yeah, and he is also he wants the the, the at bats to be better, center him into the strike zone a little bit more. I think the Padres have done that. Renfro with a double in the second, reached on an error in the fourth inning. Austin Hedges has homered and the Padres a two-run lead.
and it's two and one. Well, right there, Andy Green's talking about that. He swiles, swings wildly to the breaking ball earlier in the at bat, and then takes that breaking ball off the plate. A little more consistency of handling the strike zone. Three balls and a strike. Austin Hedges now moving ahead of Salvador Perez, James McCann, who he began the night tied with. Runs among major league catchers. Tap foul, and it's a full count, and that got a piece of Narbe, who goes down to one knee. Yeah, this foul ball is redirected. Catches him on that front left toe. On a cold night, that does not feel good. The Brackley home plate umpire, a little professional courtesy. Dusted off the plate, giving him some more time. Two outs, Eric Ibar, first base, a run in here for the Padres in the fifth. And a home run by Austin Hedges. The battle here for Hunter Renfro. Take a gap shot with the 3 2 count, might score him here. A little pop up foul off first base. Abreu going as far as he can, but that'll end up on the roof. And the Padres dug out that into it. Pitches for Miguel Gonzalez, who is nearing 90 on the night. The ninth coming up. Payoff pitch yet again. Runner off. And Renfro will take ball four. Now to first base with two down in the inning. Fourth walk of the night allowed by Miguel Gonzalez. And extends this inning, gives Alan Cordoba a chance. Comes Don Cooper, the pitching coach. Well, the day after the Padres score five or more runs, get 50% off any regular menu price online order at PapaJohns.com. Enter promo code Padres5. The Padres so far tonight with four runs. Most recently, the eighth home run of the year for Austin Hedges. The young backstop offensively having a great night going right back to the scouting reports with starting pitcher Jolie Chassin. High praise from this pitching staff with the young backstop. Drilled off by Garbe, the catcher. And the infielders here with runners at first and second and two down. That's the possible double steal where he's going to be going. Alan Cordoba, one for two. Lines one to left field, and that's going to get in for a base hit. Ibar being waved around. The throw from Cabrera will go to third, and the Padres get another run. Jump on top five to two. This time, Alan Cordoba drives in a run. Well, the first two hitters of the inning making easy outs and the home run by Hedges. And two out RBI situations for Alan Cordoba coming through for the Padres. It's a nice swing. So two down runners at first and second and action in the pen for the first time tonight. That's Caesar. We'll take a pitch in the dirt. Wow. No 
Watch Narve here. He thinks this is a breaking ball in the dirt. So you want to be a catcher, huh? Goes down to block it. Wow. It's Michael Enoa who is starting to warm in the pen right now for the White Sox. Tell you what, Gonzalez has really slowed his pace down. Caesar fouls it off, evens a count of one and one. Well, five runs have been driven in with two outs, and those two out RBIs you mentioned are killers. They are. And momentum for the Padres offense. Two lead right now. And the strike call makes it one and two. Much of the White Sox dropping five in a row. They lost here last night, and last night they allowed six two out runs. It's becoming a problem here for the White Sox. They lost seven to six here last night to the Minnesota Twins. A little bit high to Matt Caesar. Now for a team that's in a rebuild mode, obviously they have some star players on this roster. Coupled with a lot of youth, that can be frustrating. It can snowball on you. Caesar, the seventh member of the Padres to bat here in the fifth, and he strikes out to end the inning. But two runs in the inning for the Padres, and that includes home run number eight of the year for Austin Hedges. The Padres enjoy a 5 2 lead halfway through this one in Chicago. Brought to you by your San Diego County Lexus dealers who invite you to test drive a Lexus today. By Saquon Casino, play, win together in the heart of San Diego. And by Jerome's Furniture, where Jerry's price is the lowest price every day. Well, the Padres enjoy a 5 2 lead here into the last of the fifth inning. And a first pitch strike in there for Jolie Chassin, dealing with. Larry Garcia has been hit by a pitch and hit a two run home run. The off hitter with his third home run of the year. And a little dramatic spin away from that pitch. That wasn't even close. <laughs> he 
followed by Cabrera and Abreu here in the fifth inning. out hitting the White Sox eight to four in this game on top five two liner to left and that's going to get in for a hit lead off base hit for Garcia third time he's been on base tonight benefit of his second hit as we check back in with Bob Scanlon. You know, Don we've talked so much about first pitch strikes and it certainly is important but oftentimes we overlook the importance of the one one pitch and Sweeney's you talked about it a couple of innings ago the one one pitch actually more important to Julius Chassin in terms of getting batters out than strike one what am I talking about when he gets ahead one two throws that one one pitch for a strike the on base percentage is one eighty two when he falls behind two and one it jumps up to four seventy two that's a huge difference and could be the difference in a ball game. He's fell behind two and one six times tonight. Three of those times the guys have reached base and one has scored. Yeah, I think really it, to your point, Bob, that's the swing pitch. One one, both offensively and pitching wise. Lucky Cabrera batting here, 0 for 2 in the game, has grounded out twice. This is the inning that you want to have that shutdown inning. Especially with those two out RBIs. Jocelyn is yet to have a 1 2 3 inning in his outing. And in fact, the same could be said for Miguel Gonzalez. Nothing's been easy. All these innings have kind of been taxing innings. Yeah. Red Sox have left a man on in every inning. Wonder how much that wears you down mentally. And behind three and one, and frustrated, missed with that fastball at 92. Up left side. Ibar makes the catch for the first out of the fifth inning. And that'll bring up Jose Abreu. First baseman for the White Sox over for two to 90 years. Lined out to third, grounded out to third. And the time for Ryan Schumpf up to the task. Six foot three, 260 pounds. He was born in Cuba, resides now in Miami. And he'll take strike one. Fourth year with the White Sox. It's that first year when he came in, and rookie of the year. 36 home runs, 107 runs batted in, and hit 317 in his first year in 2014. When he arrived, there was another Cuban born player who's a veteran here who's Last year's shortstop for the Padres, Alexei Ramirez, was here. Really helped him out his first season. And you think about mentally what the challenges are coming over to America for the first time. Obviously, the talent is there. But going over to a new culture, that definitely helps to have a veteran and shortstop. Abreu sends it out towards right center field on the move is Renfro and he'll make the catch. Oh, was headed away from him and he reached over to make the grab for the second out here in the fifth inning. Time now for our Ram Trucks Tools of the Trade and it focuses on Abisail Garcia. Think about the fastball he is hunting it with the 400 average and he is connected on a lot committed to hit to all fields and being able to. Swing early in the count 
with that fastball. That's why you see that early season success. But the slider that has been the nemesis. You see the average 222 with the slider. Two down Garcia at first base and here is obviously L Garcia. Leary Garcia is at first base. Obviously L with a double his last time up one for two. See what that first pitch is if they indeed go to that breaking ball. Swarzak has joined Enoa in the pen now for the White Sox. So they have double barreled action. The starter, Miguel Gonzalez, has thrown 95 pitches through the first five innings. And the White Sox batting here in the bottom of the fifth. On the ground, vacated right side into right field, a base hit. Larry Garcia will try to get back to second, and the throw goes there, and he is back to the bag. Zelsley got around second base and gave some thought to go into third, but uh, Renfro tried to get him at second. He's hit for obviously El Garcia. White Sox have two on with two down. Well, we saw in our tools of the trade the fastball and jumping on it early. 92 miles an hour and had it sink. It was over the middle of the plate. Fights it off into right field. Hunter Renfro had a tough time with that. Like we said in our Ram trucks. Loves the fastball early in the count. First and second, two down. Todd Frazier, the batter. Yeah, swing and a miss. He was swinging for the downs right there, looking to tie this game up. Three home runs on the year for Frazier. 0 for 2 tonight on two ground outs. I think a lot of baseball fans remember Todd Frazier then with the Cincinnati Reds of the home run derby two years ago in Cincinnati. With his brother throwing batting practice he put on an absolute show unbelievable in front of the hometown crowd now in the Chicago White Sox uniform. On the outside corner, and it's one and two. An update on the Garcias, all three. White Sox have six hits, five by Garcia. Wow. <laughs> I might trade. I might try Jerry Garcia tonight, just just because. It's amazing. Right now you got Larry Garcia at second, obviously El Garcia at first, two down. And spinning off the backside, Chassin, no throw. Runners go. Frazier swings and pops it up. Foul and out of play. You mentioned the home run derby. We got it for you. Wow. I love going back in there. That's Jock Peterson throwing on a clinic. That's Peterson against Frazier. Johnny Washington, who's the first base coach for the Padres now, throwing two. Jock Peterson, but Todd Frazier ends up putting on a show. A ball, two strikes here to Todd Frazier, two on. And Frazier, good play discipline there, getting a piece of that, fouling it off. Next pitch will be the 90th of the night for the Padres starter. Pitches for four and two thirds, but he's had to battle all night. In the dirt, and it's two and two. Well, it's pretty interesting, as you said, Don. He has had to battle, he's had a lot of traffic on the bases. But it really goes back to last night's starter, Clayton Richard, who really gave a night off for the bullpen. So they're set up nicely for this game. Just trying to get out of this inning for Chassin would be huge.
Frazier strikes out looking. He knew it, and he takes with him the second strikeout for Chassin. Well, nice way to finish the fifth inning. White Sox leave on a pair halfway through. Padres have a 5 2 lead as Chassin strikes out Frazier. Ball break as Dallas Keuchel earning a major league leading sixth win last night against the Yankees. Billy Hamilton leading Major League Baseball 19 stolen bases he can fly. There's no doubt about that. And Ryan Braun placed on the DL with a cap strain by the Brewers. A 287 average. Seven homers 18 RBIs and one was a pretty good start for Ryan Braun before landing on the DL. I'll tell you what Dallas Keuchel is back. And that's the 2015 version. Of Dallas Keuchel had a down year last year. Now for the Astros who are leading Major League Baseball with 24 wins it's because Dallas Keuchel has been dominating. Now it's on here to the sixth inning and a new pitcher Michael E. Noah coming on here now for the White Sox their second arm used tonight. Noah's 10th appearance. And there's strike one to Corey Spangenberg. Again, the Chicago White Sox bullpen comes in second in baseball. They've been dominating for Rick Renteria. Wow. Michael Gonzalez leaves on the hook. Five innings, eight hits, five runs. Walked four and struck out two. Uh, two home runs. And runs to Matt Caesar. First pitch of the ball game was taken out of the yard by Caesar. And Austin Hedges with a solo shot in the fifth inning. Spangenberg one for three on the night. Infield hit to short back in the third inning. One of the eight hits the Padres have put together. Swing and a miss, but ball gets away. Racing over is Narve. Throw to first is in time. Able to get Spangenberg. Strike out and throw out goes two to three. Padre fans, if you can't catch the games on TV, you can stream them live on your mobile device with Fox Sports Go, presented by your San Diego County Toyota dealers. Download the app and take baseball wherever you go. Down here in the sixth, and it brings up Will Myers with the bases empty. Myers drives it out to center field. Willie Garcia is out there, and he'll make the catch for out number two. Don't have to go very far. Old for three in the ball game tonight. Two down here in the sixth inning, and it'll bring up 
on Hervis Salarte. I think Will Myers saw that curveball by Enoa against Spangenberg, said, I didn't want to wait around too long. Jumped on that first pitch fastball. Two down, Jan Herbis. Jumping back out of the way of a pitch running in. No one trying to get to the game's first one, two, three inning. Pitcher tonight with a one, two, three inning, and we're in the sixth inning. A lot of base runners for both sides. Padres with a 5 2 lead. They've stranded eight men on base. Six left on for the White Sox through the first five innings. 1 1 to Solarte. On the ground by the mound. Shift is in, and it's Garcia. Throws out Solarte and indeed the first one, two, three inning of the ball game. Five and a half done, five, two Padres. Bill Howe plays of the game and Jolie Chassin slider's been very good tonight. Touched on in our open of how important that slider was, and you could see getting that big out in the first inning with that line out to third base, also the lazy fly ball to right. And then the last inning getting Todd Frazier to freeze on that last slider. Very nice tonight for Chassin. And Davidson leading it off and popping it up foul out of play. Lee starts his inning. 91 pitches. 91. 51 have come from the stretch. It's a lot. It's a lot. A lot of guys on tonight. Bob said earlier he was been working on his command, setting up that slider. Foul ground again. Hedges back, but again, no play. Think about Chassin. Obviously, he would like to pitch better. On the road. Think about that first start in Dodger Stadium where he gave up nine earned runs. And then one in Arizona where he gave up seven, seven, excuse me. Coming this game, 22 runs on the road he has given up, but two games with 16. Swing and a miss, and Davidson strikes out for the second time tonight. That's four strikeouts now for Chassin.
Now the bite on the slider and it's been on his glove side. He's been dominating with that. Especially late in the start. Like that ball was set up with Davidson with that foul ball that fastball in. Those hitters are always aware and they don't want to get beat by that fastball. That's why it exposes them to the slider. One out here in the sixth inning. Yomer Sanchez. One for two. Single his last time up. It's a ground ball softly towards Spangenberg. And there are two outs here in the sixth inning. The third baseman 0 for 2. His number 8 spot in the order. And the catcher for the White Sox. The Sox two games under 500 coming in, having lost five games in a row. Only two and a half games off the pace behind the Minnesota Twins and the Cleveland Indians, who are tied atop the American League Central. Around 500 uh, at home and on the road. Six and seven home, nine and ten on the road. This is their first interleague game of the year. Wow. Played one until tonight. Game this three game series. I think that challenge is trying to get after Tito Francona's Cleveland Indians. I think that roster is so talented. Plus, as you know, Tito Francona, a lot of respect in the game, the way he gets his team to play, especially late in the year. That's strike three, and Chassin has his first one, two, three inning of his outing. Picks up his fifth K, 5 2 Padres. A fair ball down the third base line into the left field corner. Round from second comes Spangenberg. He will score. Trouble with it is Cabrera trying to score from first is Solarte. The throw will be close and not in time. For Hedges to get off to a good start in this game. In the air to left field, struck pretty well. Cabrera going back onto the track and it is gone into the bullpen. Well, that was the Harris game summary, and it's been all good for the Padres on top tonight. Five to two, two home runs. Saw so Hedges' home run. Matt Caesar started this game with a home run as well. And the Padres have five two lead into the seventh inning. We go. Ryan Schimpf leading it off for the Padres. Enoa out there for his second inning of relief. He enjoyed a one two three sixth inning. Striking out Spangenberg, getting Myers to fly out, Solarte to ground out. And Schimpf 0 for 3 in the ball game. And follow. 
followed by Austin Hedges and Derek Ibar here at the top of the seventh. El Gonzalez on the hook tonight for the White Sox. Five innings, five runs. White Sox shifting on the right side on Chimp. Not the first time he has seen this. Falling behind three and one. Shift with nine home runs on the year so far. And he elevates there to get him to chase that fastball that was up. Yeah, it looks like Brian Schimpf has been in between tonight. Pitch and Chimp strikes out, went back to the gas at 93. Second strikeout for Enoa, first out here of the seventh inning. And that'll bring up Austin Hedges. High fastball in beer. And I think a lot of people are trying to elevate on Brian Champ, especially with two strikes. What I mean about in between is caught in between of the breaking ball and the fastball and trying to commit to that fastball. Went out four in a row, retired by the right hand reliever. To the breaking ball that time and misses to Austin Hedges. Good night tonight for Hedges. Two for three in the game with three RBIs. No one picked him and picked the stick. Nobody did. Nobody. Sure about that? I might be wrong. It's not going to be the first time. <laughs> it's under review. Let's see. I had Caesar. Lynn had Myers. Palmer had Solarte. You Schiff. Someone lost 10 so points to that. 10 points that nobody got. That's a crushing blow. Scanlon had Spangenberg. I had Matt Caesar. That's a great choice. What does a leadoff home run get me? Does it you, <laughs> get you six points? Six points. Lose a point, he struck out in the fifth, right? You lose points for strikeouts. Who's in first? Uh, you were actually. Actually, I, I don't know if you are anymore, though. I, I was think just I might be right you, might, you might have jumped. <laughs> might be Donnie's time. <laughs> it is Donnie's time. <laughs> that runs in and almost hits edges. He's kept running in. Uh, I think you watch Enoa, and he has the stuff. We've seen some really sharp breaking balls. He has that uncomfortable delivery. If you're sitting in the batter's box, you don't want to dig in. High ball headed out towards right field. Obviously, Al Garcia makes the catch for out number two of the seventh inning. 20 pitches so far for Enoa. Five swing and misses. He has two strikeouts. And two down here in the seventh with Eric Ibar coming up. Ibar got a base hit to right field his last time up one for three. Strike one. Well, 100 even pitches for Jolie Chassin. And no action on the Padres pen. So it's like more Chassin. Well, he, he, he should be because he has had a nice feel for that slider. On the left field line that'll make its way into the seats. The 
First time Chassin has pitched here in against the Chicago White Sox. O2. Ibar reaches out and pokes it foul again. Renfro waiting on deck, but there are two outs here in the Padres' seventh inning. Swing and a miss on a pitch in the dirt. And he will run, but he will be retired on the throw out two to three. Two strikeouts in the inning, three for Noah. Seventh inning stretch, 5 2 Padres. San Diego presents Padres Baseball brought to you by Tough Shed. We are more than great sheds. Check them out at toughshed.com. By Petco, your complete pet store with all the services you need. And by San Diego Honda Dealers. Visit us at sdhondadealers.com. Back in the beautiful city of Chicago. We're on the south side for game one of a three game series. Willie Garcia leading it off here against Jolie Chassin, who is now up over 100 pitches. Looking here in the bottom of the seventh inning with a three run lead. Now don't foul to the screen. Towards shortstop by Barr racing in and on the run, low throw, but Salarte digs it out. You see is out number one here in the seventh inning. Less than a happy birthday out to Justin Hatcher, the bullpen catcher instructor out there in the bullpen for Andy Green. Here's Hatch. Happy birthday, Hatch. Well, nice job. He's the bullpen catcher, also the catching instructor for the Padres. And you know what, Don? I had a conversation with him on the plane last night. I thought it was best, the best start for Luis Torrens the other night with Luis Perdomo. He has put a lot of time into them. And why I say that is it's a Rule 5 pick. He's got a lot to do a lot of his coaching before the game and, and all the work that he puts in. I thought Luis Torrens handled, some, had handled himself very nicely with Luis Perdomo the other night. Happy birthday, Hatch. Garcia hits one high and deep towards right center field. Back to right goes Renfro, and that ball is gone. Rory Garcia with his second home run of the night. Hit one in the third, a two run shot. This is solo. And it is now five to three as the White Sox creep a little closer. Well, he 
see this leadoff hitter. He has shown some pop tonight. The leg kick. Compact swing. And the green headed out there. Third hit of the night for Garcia. His second home run. And Jolie Chassin after six and a third will be leaving. It's 5-3 San Diego. Jose Torres coming in. And the White Sox from Chicago. It'll be Trevor Cahill looking for his fourth win of the year. Three and two oh. matched up against Dylan Kobe, who gets a start. 0 oh, and three with a higher earned run average up over eight. 3.30 starting with Padres live tomorrow. We'll get you ready for game two of the three game series between the Padres and the White Sox from the south side of Chicago. Padres into the bullpen. Jose Torres first out of the pen tonight. You see Torres with the 20 strikeouts, only one walk, and those 20 strikeouts are second on the team behind Brad Hand. Lee Chassin leaves after six and a third, seven hits, three runs, a walk, and five Ks. He'll turn it over to the bullpen, departing with a chance to grab his fourth win of the year. And Lucky Cabrera dancing out of the way of a pitch down and in. 96 and by the shoe tops. Well, nothing wrong with that. You want to make these hitters uncomfortable, they will get out of the way. Jolie Chassin, nice night in the big leagues. That slider was very sharp, especially later in his outing. A troubled Lieri Garcia, who entering tonight had four home runs and 396 career at bats, has two in the ball game tonight. You would say that was characterized as a career night? Yes, I'd say so. Melky Cabrera 0 for 3 on the night. And chops one foul outside of third. 24,194 here tonight for game one. Cool night in Chicago. Popped up left side shift down from third will step into foul ground for out number two of the inning. And of course Torres had the comebacker right off his wrist in Texas. And there was some concern it was the glove hand as it turned out. And uh, he was OK but uh, that came back very sharply now off Odor's Odor's bat. But this is a good sign him back in action. Well, he's one and done. Comes in and faces Melky Cabrera. Andy Green back out there. Pitching change from Chicago.
inning as Kirby Yates gets himself ready. And so Jose Abreu coming up here with two down in the inning and a run in for the White Sox. Kirby Yates last pitched Wednesday night at Texas for two thirds of an inning. Did give up a hit, but also a strikeout. Just nicely out of the pen since being acquired. Jose Abreu coming up here for the White Sox 0 for 3 in the game. Lined out to third, grounded out to third, lined out to right. Hit the ball hard a few times, but nothing to show for it to this point of the game. Well, remember, we touched on the struggles for the Chicago White Sox against right handers. I'll be thinking about what Andy Green's trying to think of, and with the two right handed hitters in the middle of the order of Rick Renteria going to that right hander to try to. Minimize the power. Little pop up back at first. Salarte going back. Spangenberg. It'll be Corey Spangenberg who makes the grab and ends the seventh inning. White Sox get a run. We head to the eighth. 5 3 Padres. As a new pitcher in here for the White Sox to start this eighth inning, it's Chris Beck. I see the numbers by Chris Beck. No record. But the lefties have hit 353 off him with the two home runs. Well, Hunter Renfro to lead it off against Beck. Two perfect innings by Michael Enoa, who came into the game first out of the bullpen for the White Sox. Well, that's what we heard coming in, Don. We think about shortening the game. That's that's really the trend in baseball if you can get it done. And the White Sox have done that. Well, that being said, still got to get starting pitching, which I think is the key to winning consistently. This game, as you know, Rick Renteria, Don Cooper, the pitching coach, to his right, know how important pitching is. Swing and a miss, and it's 0 and 2. That call.
called up from Triple A Charlotte on April the 25th. Right-handers to a 247 average. Dealing with right-handed hitting Hunter Renfro. Thought about it, but holds off on the 94 mile an hour fastball. Sox getting a run back in the bottom of the seventh inning. Make it 5 3 now, a two run ball game here late in this one. Check swing foul behind the Padres dugout. Two two to Renfro, and that is in there for strike three. He knew it. Takes with him the first strikeout for Chris Beck. Good outing tonight for Jalee Chassin. Your thoughts, Bob Scanlon? Yeah, it was a nice outing for him tonight, but it certainly was not a walk in the park. Let's take a look at some of the sliders that he threw tonight. Now early in the game, he was trying to find it. You see, they're up in the zone. They're a little loopy, but then all of a sudden, there it is. Good hard, late, tight razor blade sliders. He threw a back door to the left-handers. It was a grind for him tonight, but really a gutsy effort. He didn't give up on that pitch. He kept working on it and became a weapon for him later in the game. That sure did. Right now, the pitcher of record in the game with one down. And Alan Cordoba bat. He's had a good night tonight from the number nine spot. He has laid that bunt down, but also the last inning, last at bat, he had a two out RBI. It really comes into play for the Padres offense tonight. 1 0 from Chris Beck. Cordoba fights it off foul down the right field line. And you always evaluate at bats and the opportunities that Alan Cordoba has received to this point. He does not look overmatched, and that's a good sign. Single A baseball last year, and now the big leagues. That is a challenging jump. Andy Green was talking about it before the ball game and said, you know, he's played well in the outfield, the infield, but he's been especially comfortable in the outfield. Yeah, and I think the, the game speeds up a little bit when you get into the you know the infield positioning. Obviously that's his natural position, but there's a lot of stuff to work on. So Ryan Bookter warming in the pen. It's getting to be that time of the game. So a lot of Brad Hand yesterday, of course, last couple days in fact. So Bookter up in the pen right now. Padres holding on to a two run advantage, trying to add on here as they bat in the eighth. Two hit night for Cordoba. High strike call. It's up now two and two. Top of the order, Matt Caesar waiting on deck. Bill Gonzalez, the starter for the White Sox, went the first five innings and used 95 pitches to go five innings. Giving up all five runs that the Padres have in the game. 2 2. Cordoba fights it off foul back to the screen and Beck operating with a 95 mile an hour fastball. Yeah, with two strikes, you want to cover the breaking ball, but also that fastball is giving yourself another opportunity. Cordoba to left field, and that's going to get in for a base hit. His third of the night. Right in front of Melky Cabrera, and a one out single for 
where Alan Cordoba having a good night here, night in Chicago. Well, you got to love this. Fought off the previous pitch, and then this ball is off the plate, as you see in our Fox tracks. And fighting it off, and a nice night in the big leagues for Alan Cordoba. Should smile. One out, one on top of the order. Matt Caesar standing in. Caesar with a home run on the first pitch of the ball game back in the first inning. Beck is paying attention to Alan Cordoba. Good speed, perfect opportunity to try to swipe a base here. Held on over there by Jose Abreu. With one out here in the eighth inning. is over to get back to the bag. Lead was not terribly large. Anytime you get back on your feet, you're not diving back. That means you can get a little more room. Johnny Washington in his ear. See if he gets a little bit bigger lead. Caesar swings, possible double play ball. The second for one on the first for two. Six to four to three on the twin killing. Five three Padres. Sox, we get ready for the bottom of the eighth inning. It's time now for the Carl's Jr. star of the game. And Austin Hedges for the Padres had a big night tonight. Hedges with a double in the third inning to drive in a pair of runs. And then he would homer in the fifth. Spangenberg and Meyer scoring on the double uh, by Hedges. And then his eighth home run of the year in the fifth inning. Two hits, three RBIs, home run number eight of the year. Leads all major league catchers with that eighth home run. Pretty good for the backstop for the Padres. New pitcher for the Padres, Ryan Bookter, into the game. 
16th appearance. Lefties and righties hitting the same. Even 200. Obviously, Garcia leading it off. Certainly a power threat. Has two hits in the game. He is doubled and singled. And he takes a breaking ball for strike one. You know, we indicated earlier in the game he loves that first pitch fastball. What do the Padres do? They dump that curveball right in there for a strike one. Ground ball to short to his left is Ibar. The throw is good, and that's out number one of the eighth. One down, doing yourself a favor. And not allowing Garcia to get on to set the table for Frazier as a game time run. He certainly can go deep. It's a big piece of cheese. You remember that flower move we saw <laughs> down in Texas? The same one is here in Chicago. How do they do that? That's incredible. <laughs> did that stun you a little bit when I dropped the flower moon off? You know, it's funny. It really did. It was, I see you as a well-rounded, smart guy. There's a foul ball. Well, you know that's that's not the truth. Uh, I mean, I knew you were smart, but I also knew that I watched in between innings, and I was keeping a pretty close eye on you in between innings. Well, he, he, and, and I noticed that you were Googling something, <laughs> and I looked over and I saw a giant moon. So I knew at some point we were going to get a lot of information. I got to come clean because yeah. I did Google, and you were right. Yeah, and I, I did. You. I said full moon. Busted. And it's <laughs> it said May 10th is the flower moon. We're just we're, we're just trying to bring as much knowledge as possible right. to our broadcast. Good information. It was new information. I didn't know what it was, but I just I, I felt like I had to out you because uh, it's fine. It's, you didn't know it. Listen, <laughs> you know the truth. You've been around me enough to know that that's coming from a different place. <laughs> One down here in the inning. He's your 0 for 3. He's grounded out twice and struck out. Mentioned the home runs. Three so far in the year for him. Broken bat. Pop up. Back goes Spangenberg to make the catch. Two down. Two down. Brings up Matt Davidson. has walked and struck out twice. DH tonight for the White Sox. In there for strike one. Ryan Buchter showing a nice feel for that breaking ball early in the count. Yeah, he's starting guys with it. That's good because you've seen the success with that fastball. To the gas there, and he's ahead 0-2. You now I remember last year, and he was such a great story out of the bullpen because he came out of nowhere, started throwing that fastball, very aggressive with the fastball. Well, we all know the the league adjusts to you, and that's a good adjustment when you can buy that strike, that early strike, and go to what he normally loves to throw. Inside there to Davidson with two down in the inning. You can see him there, and he's evolving as a relief pitcher because the slide step, no one's on, is changing the timing to the hitters. Popped up, foul ground, that'll get into the seats. Solarte gives chase. And he leaps into the seats. And does he have it? Solarte with the baseball. He does. Yon Hermes Solarte into the first row. It did go under the seats, but so did Solarte. He comes up with it and makes the grab that ends the inning. Yon Hermes has done it again. A spectator.
nachos. Yeah. <laughs> this year he catches the ball in the first row full of a hat. Uh, this is spectacular. Watch this. And you watch the hat first. Hat is caught and then he catches the hat and the ball for Salarte. <laughs> Spread Eagle and give me my hat back. I want my hat back. It's a 2005 World Series hat. <laughs> Tremendous. I want the hat. You keep the baseball and the out. <laughs> so good. It is with John Harris in the first row. And Salarte comes back and gets out of the stands and immediately looks at the big board. And of course, Spangenberg leading it off here in the ninth inning. Padres trying to add on to a 5 3 advantage. One four four in the game for the Padres second baseman. And well last year Spangenberg scheduled to be the starting second baseman for the Padres in spring training. He was injured for the bulk of the year and didn't happen. Now this year starts the year in El Paso. When he comes back he's at third base and left field. And finally gets a start at second base. Yeah, and you think about how much things change with injuries, but Corey Spangenberg went down to El Paso at the beginning of the year, got a base of at bats. Well, you see the 268 average. He also has helped himself very well in left field, which is a surprise to me. Normally that infielder and asked to go out there because of other injuries to the Padres. He's had some nice at bats. Back in the third, a run scored, a one for four night. That came in in the eighth inning. Give up a one out base hit to Alan Cordoba, but then got Matt Caesar to quickly round into a 6 4 3 double play and back out there to start the ninth. Spangenberg lines it foul into the seats. How about the work of the bullpen for the Padres tonight? Started with Torres after Chassin and then Kirby Yates and Ryan Bookter with a clean inning. Two two. Spangenberg down the left field line again and foul. Looks like Maurer is getting ready in the pen again and probably eager to get right back out there again after last night. And I was hoping for that. And I know Brandon Maurer was too. After that tough night in Texas last night with Napoli's game winning home run. That's what you want to do. You want to take the ball the next day. Side ball three full count. I guess the biggest difference between being a starter or a reliever, you can have a bad outing, have to wait all that time for your next start. Reliever, you can get right back out there the next day. Yeah, that is definitely a benefit. Payoff pitch to Spangenberg leading off the ninth inning. Flair foul off to the left again. Good battle. You know, what you always think too, Don, and you've seen it plenty of times, where the closer does blow that save. Well, you always hear that phrase, race from your hard drive. Well, I thought Trevor Hoffman was the best at that. How many blown saves in his career, but when he did, that's exactly what he wanted. He wanted to get right back on the mound the next day. Ninth pitch of this at bat coming up for Spangenberg. And a pop up down the left field line, Frazier and Garcia, and it'll be Garcia, the shortstop. Makes the catch on Spangenberg. Out number one of the ninth inning. Pretty good battle there by Spangenberg, but Chris Beck wins that battle. Well, tomorrow, game two of the series. It'll be Kobe against Cahill, and then on Sunday, Weaver and Quintana. Day baseball on Sunday. K 
and he'll three and two. He'll be 0 and three tomorrow. Oh, that's artsy right there. In the air for Will Myers out towards deep left center field. Back goes Willie Garcia at the wall. It's gone. Home run for Will Myers. Myers with his ninth home run of the year gives the Padres some insurance on top now, six to three. Third home run of the night for the Padres. Now strike the pose, Will Myers. A little bit of cut. And this is absolutely beautiful. Launch and watch. And had good sound to it. Greg Tarrie out there to make the pitching change after the home run by Will Myers has given the Padres a 6 3 lead. Home run of the year, adding on to a Padres lead now on top, six to three in the ball game, and a new pitcher into the game as David Holmberg comes in now for the White Sox. Now David Holmberg last pitched on Tuesday versus Minnesota, where he threw two scoreless innings. Left-hander limiting limiting the lefties to 200 average on the year. And a curveball, first pitch to Jan Hervis Solarte. Padres with a three home run night tonight. They've had eight home runs in the last five games, and again, doing the long ball again tonight. And Matt Caesar with the one in the first, and then Will Myers. Tough hop off the lip of the grass to Frazier, but he plays it nicely and throws out Solarte. I mean, this is pretty rare. We don't usually update the standings in the middle of the game, but we're doing that tonight. Oh, and you did jump in, didn't the you? The reason we're doing this is because Donnie's ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's Donnie's turn. <laughs> Start of the game, uh, some points behind you. Listen, but as it stands right now, on top. Here's my guy. If it were to end today, if it ends today, I'm winning. Mud's starting to creep up yes, a little he bit. He's making some noise. Probably important that Anthony. Gwen is is picking for him. Yeah, I probably reason why he's the getting difference some points. Yeah, exactly. Now Ryan Chip batting here with two down in the ninth inning. I have some real questions about uh, the scoring process. You don't like it? Well, I just think a double play to take minus two. Mm, that hurts. That's there, there's some stuff that's painful on the minus side. The strikeouts, the double plays, and then there's some things there that. I mean, who do I bring this up with? Well, I, I think uh, Max Michelak might be the guy that you want to have a conversation I, with. I know Max. And uh, I would have a conversation with him. I would just try okay. to pick the right time. Now it's not probably no, a good time. It's not a good time. Okay. <laughs> Two down here in the ninth. Because he's in my ear right now. 
and I could discuss this right now. One, two pitches in there for strike three to Ryan Schimp to end the inning. But Will Myers has added a run on a home run for Myers, his ninth of the year for the Padres, their third of the night. 6 3, San Diego to the bottom of the ninth. It is a save situation for Brandon Bauer, and of course, coming off last night in Texas, one he would like to forget. A walk-off home run for Mike Napoli. First blown save of the year for Brandon Bauer, and he took the loss in last night's defeat. And you got to remember, Mike Napoli came into that game batting 160, had the home run against Clayton Richard earlier in the game, and then the one off Brandon Bauer that won the game. But Brandon gets the ball back, and this is important. Four out of five now in save opportunities. Swing and a miss for strike one for Yomer Sanchez, who leads it off here in the bottom of the ninth. Bauer, since the last July, July 1st, in fact, 17 of 20 in saves opportunities. Third of the order expected for the White Sox. And here's a liner into center field for a base hit. It starts the bottom of the ninth inning. Sanchez with his second hit of the night. Well, off of the fastball, he throws the hard slider. And Sanchez waits back nicely on this ball. This is the middle of the field. Runner on here and it brings up Omar Arbias who stands in for the fourth time tonight. 0 for 3 in the game. He's fly to right, fouled out, struck out. There is strike one. A gas at 95 miles an hour. Odiashi has come out on deck here for the White Sox. To pitch it for Willie Garcia, it appears. Runner goes. Pitch swung on, and a one hopper picked at third by Schiff. Took a look at second, but gets the out at first base. The outs are the important thing right now. Nice pick down there at third by Schiff. And that is out number one. They had Sanchez start at first base, so he takes second. Well, watch Ryan Schiff way off the bag, and that's a shift. A re nice reaction with his glove. That's a big out. And Ashy is going to pinch it here for the White Sox. Willie Garcia who had been one for three in the ball game. 18 games, just a 107 average for Ashy. Home run, four runs batted in. Lefty's only hitting at 188 against Brandon Bauer. 
A swing and a miss for strike one. First pitch changeup. All those hitters off the bench will hunt that first pitch fastball. Running away, 96. Andrews trying to snap a three game losing streak coming into tonight's action. In the first game of that four game series against Texas, dropped the next three. Love to begin this three game series against the White Sox with a win and the three run lead with one out of the ninth. Swing and a miss, off balance for Ashy. Now three change ups to Ashy in this at bat. Well, again, the arm speed on the change up really has Ashy locked up. On the outside corner for strike three, two down in the ninth inning. Now she frozen on that, and Maurer has out number two of the ninth. Well, you're looking for the changeup again, and he paints that 97 mile an hour fastball on the outside part. Good pitching by Maurer. Here comes Leori Garcia with two down in the inning. Had a big night tonight. Three hits, three RBIs, two home runs for Garcia. And very tardy on that 97 mile an hour fastball. Ground ball softly by the mound towards Spangenberg. He'll go to first, and the Padres will win. Now San Diego takes game one of this three-game series against the Chicago White Sox. And puts an end to their three-game losing streak tonight as the Padres win this one six to three. And we check in with Mike Pomerantz. What's in store, Mike? 